Hey moms, welcome to the Gather Moms podcast. My name is Kate. And I'm Rebecca. We've created this space just for you because we're both moms and we get you. Yes, we believe there truly ain't no hood like the motherhood and we need to be in this together. We also believe we can't mom well without Jesus. So you're going to hear us talk about him too. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gather Moms and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. All right, mamas, let's jump in. Hey mamas, welcome back to the Gather Moms podcast. This is part two of our discussion on the pregnancy and newborn season. Let's jump in. So I wanted us to zone in specifically on this newborn season, but I thought it was good to kind of go through the buildup of all you go through in pregnancy and you have this baby now that they hand you to take home and they think that like you can handle this for some reason. It's like, what, what are you talking about? I barely know how to put this car seat in the car. Like, Oh, Oh, I remember them make you bring that car seat in and you have to like show them that you can buckle the baby in. Yeah. Which you can't, for me, listen, that's different for us. For me, I'm like, uh, I'm sorry. This is my kid. I want to take him. I'm going to take him. I don't know why you get to tell me if I'm allowed. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That first trip home from the hospital. But I, one of the things I think about with this newborn season is that there is really never another time in your life when you are more vulnerable. Like the two big seasons in your life before this, for a lot of people would have been going to college and getting married. Like if you're following the regular American schedule, you potentially graduated high school, went off to college and got married. <coughs> And those two seasons are a lot because you're you're having to try something new. You're kind of going out on your own, doing something that you've never done before, and you have to figure it out. And so you have a little bit of a warm up to like being brave and, and having to become a person that can do things on their own. But when you first become a mom, you feel the immense pressure of not only not knowing what you're doing, but being responsible for another human being. And it's not just about you anymore. And more than ever in any season before, there are so many people. Like when you go to college, people have thoughts for you. And when you get married, people have thoughts for you. But boy, when you become a mom, like they have so many ideas and opinions on how you should be doing things. And that can just be so challenging when you're just feeling so vulnerable. And you have all these people wanting to give you their tips. Well, and I remember more just like strangers when yeah. you would be out with a newborn and they would want to come touch the baby uh-huh. and talk to, real close to the baby uh-huh. and then tell you this is what happened with my baby. Right. Or, and I, it's all well-meaning. Yeah. But just like you're saying, because you're so vulnerable in that stage and you don't actually know if you're doing a good job, anything anybody says to you can come across as negative towards how you have been managing life with this right. new baby. Of course. You just feel like attacked, even though they're not trying to. But yeah. you're just like, well, I didn't do that, and I didn't do that, and that didn't happen to us. And then you feel just like, what's happening? Yes. Um, and I think an, another hard piece is that everybody tells you that you're supposed to have this like motherly instinct. And that can be hard to find that voice for a while to try and figure out where, where is that? And this natural bond I'm supposed to have with this child, like you're sold these things that don't necessarily, they aren't guaranteed. Mm -hmm. It can take some time for those things to develop. And so you're trying to navigate this, this whole world of figuring that out. Not only that, but this is the first time in your life that you're experiencing a new season. You're responsible for a new person And your body has just been through the ringer, emotionally, hormonally, physically, and you're having to try and figure out how to care for yourself and care for this human being that relies on you completely. Yes. I remember people would walk into my hospital room and I'd just start crying. Oh. Because the emotions would just well up inside you and then this hormonal, it felt like a firework and then it was like, (gasps) yeah, (gasps) and you're just swimming in it. Yes. Um, And... And every baby is different. So no matter how many books you read or what you Google, your baby, there's going to be things that are different. Yep. And the hard thing is, even when you have second and third children, 
no, the previous baby is not going to do what the next baby did. That's there might right. be some similarities, but there's going to be a lot of differences. I think the other complication is that <clears throat> you are now raising a parent, raising a child with another human being, the other parent, and trying to navigate that with them, where they have their own upbringing, they have their own value system, they have their own ideas about how things should go for that baby. And so not only are you like wrecked as a human, you've been handed a human, and now you have to work with another human (laughs) to try and figure out how to keep this baby alive. Like you don't, you aren't necessarily calling all the shots. And so you find out pretty quickly where the two of you align and where you don't. You mean when you leave that baby with him for the first time to go to the grocery store and you come home and he's like, yeah, I fed him and we did this. And you're like, that's not on the schedule. Right. Yeah. Or you know, one of you wants to swaddle and the other one doesn't. Or one of you, and it's usually the husband that's like, okay, it's time for them to try and cry it out and sleep through the night. And you're like, <laughs> or get him out of our or bedroom. Or get him out of the bedroom. <laughs> yes. So we asked moms on our social, what was the hardest part of the newborn stage? And they overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly said lack of sleep. Do you remember how hard it was to be so sleep deprived? Nope, don't remember. Really? Nope. I'm sure I was, but I don't remember it being hard. I guess, and maybe that's God's grace, is like those areas feel foggy, you know, but there's like a haze around it. Yes. Of just kind of, I mean, we made it through it. Yes. Yes. But it was hard. It was hard. I'm, I'm telling you, my bra- I mean, maybe my brain just forgets the things that are hard. <laughs> Jeremy was such a good partner to me. So he would, we would take turns and he would sleep like in the guest room and get a full night's sleep. And I would sleep in the bedroom with the baby and so, and do the night feedings. And then he'd come and get the baby at like 6 a.m. So then maybe I could sleep for a little bit uh-huh. until like your boobs are hard as rocks and you have to get up, you know, but... <laughs> Which is the hard part about breastfeeding is you can't sleep no, that much right. once you're on that routine. Right. Um, and then he would then let me go sleep in the guest room a couple nights a week and try and get like six hours at a time. And he would take the nighttime feedings. We never did that. He was such a good partner. That's so interesting. Even the way people adjust their lives after it. Yeah. We, I never even thought of that. Yeah. We should like take turns or you should go in the guest room. We just, we both woke up. We both stumbled through it. Well, we but, both. And that's what's hard is you can't hardly even get creative about it because you're just in survival mode. So you're not like the, your prefrontal cortex. There we go. That's another uh, no, scientific you're, you're dropping them left and right. Where you like think creatively is not because you're working out of fight or flight, like your survival mode, you know? Yes. I think we finally figured out that system by like the second or third kid where it was like, okay, we need, we need to do something better than this. But Jeremy likes his sleep, too. He does. Yes. And so it was a real gift. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They also said the hardest things were breastfeeding. Yes. And formula and trying to figure all that out. Yes, yes, yes. Breastfeeding was never easy for me. Yes. And then even after you get them on a schedule, their schedule changes. Yes. They have growth spurts. Even if you try formula, then six months in, the formula, their little tummies change. Uh I mean, it is a constant give and take of what goes what's next they said um the other things that were hard were postpartum depression isolation and loneliness and then like just all of the unknowns yes like all the things you just don't know about like how do i take their temperature how do i give them tylenol how much tylenol is okay yes i had postpartum depression with jake and i remember not understanding what was happening to me okay why i was so sad why I didn't want to go do things. I felt scared to go out with the baby. I think he was maybe like four or five months before we figured out what was going on. Really? And I'm so thankful we did because then I was more aware of it for the next ones. Okay. Yeah. But I think that there are sweet mamas that go years uh-huh. without knowing yeah. that this is what's happening to them. Yeah. And that some seeing their doctor would help. Because yes. there is so much unknown and you do feel so vulnerable that you're like, well, maybe this is just how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Maybe this, maybe this is just how it feels to have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have people around you or if your doctor isn't asking the questions, then yeah, you could miss it. Yeah. And just struggle under it for a long time. Yeah. Um, 
what do you feel like that was what was unexpectedly hard for you in the newborn stage, like being caught off guard with postpartum depression? Yeah, because I think I had been a relatively independent, happy person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I think when you, because I lived pretty, pretty go with the flow, that you just kind of assume you can handle it. Yeah. Okay, well, I can do this. You know, I've been doing all the other things. And so I do think when that hit, because I had not struggled with it before and I didn't understand the way my body was reacting or the way I was feeling. I, my husband, bless him, he didn't know. You uh-huh. know, they sure. don't. Exactly. They're, they're scared to, to say it. anything to you too because they don't well, want to set you off. Yeah. And they're new to, they're just as new to this whole thing yeah. as we are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, I think I was crying so much that I finally was like, I just need to go see the doctor, mm. you know, but that's where as a friend, I really think you can help your girlfriends uh-huh. that if you see some symptoms that maybe just, you know, delicately approach that and just say, hey, how often are you feeling that way? Yeah. What happens when you feel that way? Uh-huh. Are you having trouble getting out of the house? Maybe just, we talked about this on the last episode. Don't immediately jump to telling your story. Well, right. What happened to me? Right. But just start asking a lot of questions. Yeah. Because sometimes just by asking someone a question, it helps them go, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> that is happening. Yeah. And, it, and they might actually come to that conclusion on their own. Yeah. What did you, what were your favorite parts of the newborn stage? Sitting on the couch with him watching Good Morning America. Really? I loved it. That's sweet. I love putting them on the little boppy. Yeah. And just sitting there, changing their clothes. I love getting them dressed. I love, except for boys. Back yeah. when I had boys in the 1800s, uh-huh. we did not have fun clothes <laughs> like y'all have now. We didn't have these like cute little bandana bibs that they wore oh, those when they cute. were drooling. Yeah. yeah. We had light blue teddy bear bibs that matched nothing in their closet yeah. that you had to put on them to go to church and it was not fun teddy bear bibs. it was yeah. not fun yeah i I, that. I both felt imprisoned by my chair where i nursed and it was a place of something i loved yes just sitting there and yeah. being with the baby yeah um, okay, so we asked moms for best advice that they would give a newborn mom. And I have to start off with this one because it cracked me up. But one of the ones, I laughed out loud when I read this. And she said, hire a cleaning lady. <laughs> Genius. Yes, girl. I agree. Because, and then but the overwhelming response was, accept the help and ask for help. Yes. Like that was over and over and over what mom said. Is, yes. Stop telling everyone you're fine and that you've got this. Yes. Accept the help and ask for help. People want to help you. They do. They sure do. One of the biggest helps for me was uh, someone came with each of my pregnancies, either my sister or my sister-in-law came and spent a couple of nights and slept on the couch and took the nighttime feedings. Yes. And just gave us a reprieve. Like in those first three or four weeks where you're just like in a daze to take a night. Yes. Yes. Because someone who's getting regular sleep to sacrifice a night or two is not that big of a deal. And to let go of your control on those nights. So don't be thinking about how they're doing it or what they're doing. Let them own that. Yes. It's only a couple nights. Exactly. And that was hard for me, but I knew I had to sleep. Yes. And so their help was huge. And then I was able to pay that forward and and was able to do that for a couple friends. That's right. Yes. But they had to let me help and say, I I know this is weird, but I'm just going to sleep on your couch. Just bring the bassinet out here. Yes. And I'll get up. (gasps) Y'all. We would love that now. Oh, like yeah, in our fun. phase of life yes, yes. to get to come hold your baby. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. It would be like a gift to us. I would happily sacrifice a night of sleep. Happily yes. sacrifice. Yes. Like don't think you're burdening someone. Because honestly, for us, it's like a redo. We're like, oh, I get to do it again. Yes. We love it. Yes. It's sweet. There's nothing like middle of the night, quiet, you and the baby. Yes. Um, they also said, um, some of them had things about like that it really helped them to set a schedule or not. So I'm not going to get into those necessarily. Well, and what I would say is there's no wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. not feel like, because I do think when I raised my first couple boys, there was more of a pressure that you had to follow this certain really? child rearing book. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if you didn't, you were not doing it correctly. And I would say one of the things that I think is so cool in today's time is that you have so much more freedom Yeah. to make your own way in the world. In yeah. that regard, yeah. and do what's right for your baby. Good. And it's okay, even when you get into a play group with other mamas, and this one's on a schedule, and this one's not, and this one's bottle feeding, and this one's nursing, there is, you don't have to feel that pressure anymore. Everybody's yeah. doing it different, yeah. and their kids are turning out just fine. Yeah, that's great. 
Um, one of the comments I loved is she said, love them and feed them. Nothing else matters. Yes. And I think that's so good and so true. good. Yes. Like that is what this time is about is you loving on that baby and feeding them. And like, that's it. That's it. That's right. Nothing else matters. Uh, I think we have all this pressure about newborn photos and having people over and the house being clean and no, really like just let all that stuff go. Yes. Your job is to love and feed that baby. So the worst advice received um, was a lot of the stuff where it's like, enjoy every minute, cherish every moment. It goes by so fast. And we know that those are well-meaning, but like when you're in the middle of not having slept for a couple of months and your body is on fire, like emotionally, physically, mentally, like it's just crazy. And somebody tells you to cherish every moment you want to throat punch them. Or if your baby has colic. Yes. And every night from 5 to 8 p.m., they scream in your house and you think you're going to lose your mind. Yes. It's okay to not love that moment. Yes. You do not have to look back and cherish every single one because there are some that you're going to have to let go of in order to want to have another one. Yeah. Yeah. The other one was, and I think I felt convicted about this because I feel like I am guilty of having said this. I need to be really careful. Um, But mom saying, just wait. Just wait. Like, you think this is hard? Just wait. (laughs) You know? Oh, you think newborns are hard? Just wait till you have a toddler. Oh, you think toddlers are hard? Just wait till that kid's in middle school. Like, we do that. We do. You're right. You're right. And, oh, I hate that. We, We need to be more careful to not do that. That's right. Each phase is different. Each phase has parts that you enjoy and some that you're ready to let go. Yeah. And it's okay to just be in that season and not have to go, what's going to happen in the next one? Yeah. Why are they saying that? Yeah. Yeah. The other one, and I just want to stop down on this. I feel like we've gotten much better as a society, but the other just terrible advice is the breast is best thing. Yes. Like, leave them alone. Leave these moms alone. They, we all have enough guilt Without you coming with a for us with this breast is best business. Yes. If a mom needs to formula feed her kid, let her do that. If right. she's doing a combo, let her do that. If she's breastfeeding, let her do that. Like, why are we giving this feedback on this? I don't know. Yeah. No, I think it's definitely getting better in our culture today with that too. Because when I had Jake, I remember the nurses in the hospital were shocked. Like, they couldn't believe that I wasn't even going to try a nurse. Okay. I just immediately said, no. Yeah. We're just going to do a bottle. Yeah. And you had to be super strong and sure of yourself because you got lots of looks and comments. Well, and for me, uh, my milk comes in late. You know, it was usually like day four. Um, And so that's a long time waiting for milk to come in. And with my first one, like waiting was hard. Uh, But he was doing fine, so I wasn't worried about it. Second one, same thing. Uh, she was doing fine. So I wasn't that worried about it. Third one, when I went in for my like three or four day checkup, whatever that is, um, Caroline, what, what we came to find out was that Caroline had a tongue tie, but we had gone into the pediatrician and she said, you need to supplement with formula. And I said, I, my milk is going to come in tomorrow. Like this is my third baby. I know it's coming. It's going to be fine. And She picked Caroline up and looked at her and talked directly to Caroline and said, you tell your mom she needs to give you formula or I'm going to have to do bad things to you. (laughs) (laughs) And I looked at her. I looked at Jeremy. Both of us were shocked. Anyway, what she meant was she was threatening to to hospitalize Caroline. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that doctor was sweet. um, But that was just the absolute worst thing you could have said in that room at that particular time. Yes. And she made us make an appointment to come back the next day to check Caroline's weight. I did not go to that appointment. Yeah. I switched doctors immediately. But I I did make an appointment to see a lactation consultant. Yes. And that's when, you know, the next day I saw a lactation consultant figured out we had a tongue tie. Yeah. But, you know, you just have to be careful. Yes. What you say to mamas with fresh babies and. Yes. And tender emotions. Yes. And yes. They're just trying to figure it out. Yes. So as we talk about this stage, I think it's good for us to have the conversation. 
whether you're in this season or not, because you know, mom, if you're in this season, hopefully it's helpful for you to like feel seen and known. But if you're not, it's helpful to remember like what this was like and what these mamas are going to, because there are moms in our sphere that are going through these things right now. And we need to remember to be tender toward what they're experiencing. So just like we talked about what we want to talk about on these episodes, I want to talk through just a few things of what we would encourage you to embrace and what we would encourage you to let go in the season. So I would encourage you to embrace that everything right now is about this baby and you. Like that is what your season is about. This child is a gift. You know, last week we talked about the waiting season and Hannah praying for Samuel. And it says uh, then her prayer, once she, when she has Samuel, 1 Samuel one twenty seven says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted the desires of my heart. Mm-hmm. That there's an embracing to, you know, you being up in the middle of the night and you're exhausted and things are hard and just being able to take a moment and go, this is what I prayed for. And I am sitting in the middle of an answered prayer and just embracing where you are, not trying to get out ahead of it, not trying to organize or control everything, but just like sitting in, this is where I am. I am about taking care of myself and this baby right now. That's good. Um, I think remembering that, uh, God created this baby, embrace that. And he created that baby probably in you, unless this, unless you're in an adoptive situation, he created that baby in you. And because you bore a child, your body is different. I remember with my first one, like choosing the meal after Caleb was born, I was so messed up about my body. I was even thinking, okay, how am I going to lose this baby weight? you know, less than 24 hours Mm -hmm. after having this child. Mm -hmm. And so if you could just embrace that this beautiful body that just birthed this child, there may be a season where you start exercising and, you know, taking some choices to be able to wear your jeans again, but that's just not where you are. Not right now. That's right. So embrace this beautiful body that God created that made it possible for you to bear a child. Um, And embrace the offering of help. There are more people that are going to offer help for you right now in these first few months than maybe ever. (laughs) Ain't nobody offering when they get in middle school. (laughs) Nope. Nope, sure aren't. And so embrace the help. If they want to bring a meal, let them. Let them. If they want to hold the baby, let them. If they want to buy diapers while they're at the store for you, let them. Yes. Yes, just let them. So that's what to embrace, what to let go. Let go of pleasing other people and making sure that they're happy with how things are going for you and the baby. You know, God created this baby. God created you. You listen to him and you take your cues from him. Um, So try and let go of other people's opinions. And if your baby's wearing the right outfit or if they have on socks or, you know, all that stuff. Well, and I would say, too, some good advice is to enlist your spouse Uh to help you. If you're out in a public situation and you feel like someone may be offering something that's just not good for your mental state right then, that maybe your spouse could jump in and say, he could almost be your protector. Yeah. Hey, we're, thank you uh-huh. for sharing that. Uh-huh. We'll take that into consideration. Because uh-huh. I think sometimes, moms, you feel this need to respond at all times. Like I have to talk or say thank you or whatever. And you don't always have to be the person that responds. Yeah. So maybe thinking about enlisting some help from your spouse with that. Good. I love that. Um, I think you need to let go of being like camera ready every day. <laughs> There is something nice about getting dressed and taking a shower and brushing your teeth. Like but that. there's also something very nice about staying in your pajamas all day long. Yes. So just not feeling, let go of the expectation that you are going to be a fully dressed human every day and have a full face of makeup on. Just let that go because we're embracing this at-home cocooning season. So we're going to let go of this expectation that we're ready to go out into the world yet. We're, Agreed. We're not. Um, and let go of the idea, the false expectation that you can keep doing all the things you can't keep cooking and cleaning and working and all the things you were doing pre baby. It just doesn't make sense. You can't. And so let go of that expectation. You know, what we talked about as we were setting up this season is how much joy we find when we embrace the season that we're in and let go of the things that our false expectations um, for where we are. 
So, hey, as we wrap up this episode, you know, I want you to think about how you can support a mom who's in this season. So I would encourage you today to, if you could take her a meal or send her a DoorDash gift card and do not expect to get FaceTime with the baby. You let that mama know. That's right. I am happy to leave it on the porch if that is what is best for you. That's right. Because this is not about you, ma'am. This Mm -hmm. is about that mama and that baby. Yes. Um, Don't expect mom or baby to perform. The hardest visits for me were always when someone like showed up hungry or, you know, wanted to wake the baby up when it was sleeping or, you know, you're like, what are yeah. you doing? Yeah. Um, what you can do, a new mama, you tell her she looks amazing. You just tell her. Yes. You look amazing. Yes. Yes. I, I cannot believe it. you're at church. Way to go. Yes. You're doing such a great job. That's right. You know that we just like, just over do it with encouragement. Let them know how amazed we are by them. Because those words to them will be like a gift in the midst of a desert. They will cling to those. They will go home and remember the kind things that you said. Yeah. And then they will say them to another mom when they're out of that season. Yes. The gift that keeps on giving. Yes. And let her know you're praying for her. And you can ask her, how can I be praying? That's right. And then pray specifically for those things. And I think a good verse um, that you could pray over a mom, and for a mom in this newborn season that's hard, the verse that came to my mind when I was thinking about you is Psalm 23, 1 through 3. Um, To the newborn mom sitting in her chair rocking her newborn, that you would say over yourself, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Mm, That's good. And if you wanted to send that to another mama that you would say to her, the Lord is your shepherd. You lack nothing. He makes you lie down in green pastures. He leads you beside quiet waters. He refreshes your soul. And then she would tell her, I am praying that over you. We are going to, um, I reached out to some newborn mamas and asked them for their fa- for their favorite resources. And I have a couple of awesome Instagram accounts um, and a website that I want to send you to. So we're going to put those in the show notes. Um, but moms, we, we love you newborn moms. We love you pregnant moms that are going through this. And we love this mom community that we know that you are going to, after you um, listen to this episode, that you are going to reach out to and encourage another mama going through this season. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye.